Okay, so today we're going to look at using images to actually trace in your sketches and actually to build your models from those. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this because it is quite easy to do this to actually get an image in there and trace from it. Uh, there's only a few steps, but I will show you how to actually use the images in there if you don't know how to already. So I've got two images here and I want to use this one to trace against. Now I was going to use this one because it's bigger but I'm going to use the smaller one to show you how easy it is. So what I'm looking at is actually looking to trace this in two parts because it's a two part image. So I want to trace this top part here and this bottom part. And I'm going to just focus on this top part here. Now as you can see there is no dimensions or anything but there is one dimension well there is two dimensions that I do know and that's the CD player and the floppy disk drive there so they're standard CD player size so from that I can derive how big this actual uh, system is you can see the, the CD player is in there um, for this video I would be just taking the front of this and just sketching this I'm just going to show you how to do that so let's hop over into FreeCAD Let's bring this up full screen and I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to use the drop down and go over to the workbench called image. Now there's a number of options on here and there's one option that I'm not quite sure about and I don't know the reason why it's there because it just seems a bit, be a bit pointless and there's this scale image. I'll get to that in a minute. So the first option here is open image view. Now this is great for just having a look at a reference image. Let's pull up this one here. This one I can look and that just opens it in a new window so I can look at it there. Um, I can't really do anything much with it there and I can look at X and Y positions and that's about it. Obviously I can uh, zoom in so zoom. No I can't zoom in. No, it says zoom 1.0 there. Oh well, um, there we go. Zoom 1.0. And I can increase it to the actual window size itself. There we go. So that's just a window with your image in. But if I want the image into a sketch, what I need to do is actually use the, let me just come out of that a minute, use this one which is create a planner image in, 3D, in the 3D space. So if I click that one, click my image, and I'm going to use the XY plane because I'm looking down on it from the top, which is the Z axis, so I'm looking down from the Z axis onto the XY, onto the XY plane, and I hit OK. So that's the image plane there, and at the moment there's nothing really to, to see. Um, let's just zoom out a minute so it will fit to zoom so there we go fits the whole contents of the screen so that's the planner image there so at the moment we've got the image in our scene ready to go now I want to jump onto the part design so I can actually start sketching this now and I'm going to create a body and I'm going to create a sketch and again, I'm on the XY plane, the same plane that my image has been attached to. I hit OK. And now I've got this. I can click on my uh, my screen and actually use the arrow keys to move this about into the correct space. I can use the zoom. Just show you where the zoom is. Um, normally do this by by shortcuts. So there we go. Zoom in, control plus plus. So control plus, obviously you have to press the shift as well. There we go, so I'm gonna zoom that in, control minus zoom out. And now I can actually start um, actually drawing over this with my sketch, my sketch elements. So first things first, I'm gonna do the uh, CD drive, which is pretty simple. Now I just want to space it where that CD drive is. So just going to do that. I hit escape so I get my normal mouse pointer back and just bring that into position. 
Now I know this is, I know this here, I know the size of this because it's a normal CD drive. Um, so I can actually see what proportions they are when I start actually constricting this up. I'm going to constrain across those two points. I'm going to put a horizontal constraint and that's saying it's 8.82 millimeters. So when I go and scale this up later, I can actually uh, change that um, change that to actually uh, be the size of the CD-ROM drive. And what I'll do probably is actually use a spreadsheet to actually bring everything into proportion to a known factor, which is the CD drive. And I'll go through that in another video. So uh, this video is just to get the actual sketch on there up and ready. So I'm going to OK that. And I'm going to do the same for the floppy drive as well. Hit escape and just get this nicely positioned. Now I'm going to constrain those two. 6.27 6 millimeters. Obviously that will change once I uh, start getting the um, proper sizes in. Put height constraint on that. Okay, that. Don't forget a height constraint on this one. Okay, that. And the next thing is, I'm going to deal with the horizontal, all the horizontal lines first. So hit line, and I'm going to stick a line on the horizontal here, just roughly. And then a minute I'll put a horizontal constraint on there, that will straighten that up, and I can move that into position. Okay. So the thing I'm going to do is that all of these are in the center of this box. Um, sorry, the center of this actual model itself, the machine. So I'm going to put how long is that? Let's put a length in there 16.23. So what I'm going to, oh, 16.24. So if I put a half a constraint on there, which is 812, so I'm going to put a point on there, create a point in the sketch, and stick it down the bottom, hit escape, and I'm going to constrain that point to that line. And then I'm going to put a length constraint in there, Uh, what does it say? 8.12. So that's halfway. So I've got that halfway there, so I can actually use these. Um, what I'll probably use is a bit of um, construction. Uh, if I go into here, so I'm toggling between geometry from construction mode to geometry mode, or vice versa. Um, I can use a bit of construction to actually get these in into the center. Okay, so I'm going to get the curves in now. And I'm going to use endpoints and rim points curve. The good thing about that is we can actually click on our start, click on our end, and then curve it to what we desire, like that. And then I'm going to make sure that I have constrained those two there. So there we go, that's constrained. Let me just hit Control Z. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. That point to there and put the curve in. There we go. Hit Escape. Just highlight that. Oops, those points there. What I'm going to do is hit Control and just unselect that line so we should have the points under there selected. Constrain those points, just check that. Yeah, hit Control Z. And if I click on this arc here, I can put a radius constraint in. Okay, and the same for this one. Actually, I'll make those two equal, do some finer adjustment, 
There we go. Bring those back in. So that's all good. So those are constrained, and I'm going to put the last arc in from here to here with some curve. Hit escape. And we want that bit there, those two points there of this arc and this arc to be constrained. All right, let's bring that up a bit. And the same with those two. And if I click on that, you see those all click together. Now, click on this one, and I'm going to do a, oops, come here. Radius constraint on there. So I've got to the point where I've almost constrained all this up. Now um, I've still got to do constraints for the CD ROM drive to make sure that's in the center. So I'm going to put some center marks on here. Um, I've put. It's best to do the uh, the the old um, these little. Constraints here are horizontal constraints, so I've actually constrained these two points along the horizontal, and that stops it from moving up and down. So if I get rid of that constraint on there, if I did that, you can see when we start to get this seesaw effect. So I just constrain those two back up, those two points there. Just put a horizontal constraint in there, that gets it nice, that, nice and stuck there. Because we have this horizontal line, I can actually put these along the horizontal um, just by doing the same along these. So if I place a point constraint on here, let's escape that. Let's make this a nice. See eight nine six, a uh, nice rounded number. See that's coming. I've actually started to put a spreadsheet in here now. So if I go back to, I'll show you how to do this in another video. I can actually place nine in there, save it, and actually go back to my sketch. See that's changed to nine now. So I can actually put. Point that point that I've placed on there just attach that to the line. And then we can put a constraint of course close there, four point five. So we'll grab a hold of that. What should happen? I'll be able to move that about. And now I can constrain that against there and put them in the horizontal. There you go. I can do the same for this one as well. And now I can do some fixings along the same for the vertical to get that in centered right. And you'll find that perhaps these are off center a bit, so you might might have to actually adjust these to make sure they're the same distance apart. So now you can do a bit of fiddling, but you know that that CD, CD drum, ROM drive is your actual uh, reference reference point because it's a known size. So once you've got your uh, body, let's go back to the model, let's go back to the sketch. Yeah, so once you've actually got it all sorted, you can actually start adding the spreadsheet and actually start getting the spreadsheet in there and doing a bit of maths in there to actually resize the actual model to or the sketch to actually the, what you want what you want by using ratios and using formulas and spreadsheets. And I will go through that in another video. But that video is just, just to show you how to actually uh, get your sketch all up and running with a background image and to trace a background image 
in your sketch so you've got something to start with okay thanks for now and i'll see you in the next video where i'll take this further